share what aspects of the law can be enhanced, you know, to create that enabling environment uh, for infrastructure development or increased activity in the market. I mean, there have been some fears that maybe the legislation is trying to, is going to um, affect, you know, activity in the sector negatively. So we want to allay those fears. Let's have your perspective. Distinguished Senator, the Executive Secretary, and CDFB, I recognize you very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, when I got the topic for discussion, I often I had to look through all the items to be discussed, and I was a bit worried. I said, uh, if I didn't know better, I would have taught one of two things. One, either the years was trying to send me back to school, <laughs> or he was trying to distract me sufficiently. <laughs> But that said, uh, I tried to get a grasp of what was to be discussed. I am a politician and legislature, but I'll talk from the legislative standpoint. I think uh, from the legislative standpoint, we're trying to do quite a lot to replicate the gains uh, from the oil and gas sector in every other sector of the economy. I'm very sure before me, the Senator may have talked a bit of it. We're coming up with a, a new law that will ensure that Nigerians benefit from other sectors the same way they've benefited from the oil and gas sector. Critical infrastructure is key to the development of every sector. But we're going to engage with stakeholders to ensure that we come up with a legislation that will guarantee that Nigerians get the best deal in terms of the process of developing critical infrastructure, in terms of building capacities along those lines, in terms of being competitive even outside the shores of Nigeria. Yesterday, we had some interaction with stakeholders, and I was privileged to have in my office the Honourable Minister for Works, and we battered back and forth, and he gave us very insightful arguments, you know, on how they wanted the infrastructure sector to be handled, you know, in terms of getting the benefits from Nigerians, just like Nodi Abdi. And um, I got a brief what the Senate proposing uh, in terms of this new law I'm talking about creating an agency you know that probably the board will be under and all that and um, for us from the House of Reps we're trying to tread a bit more cautiously I would say and the reason why we're doing that is that we realize that most times when you create bureaucratic bottlenecks you know you run into several challenges Today we have a major challenge with NDDC. There is this uh, disagreement on what role the NDDC should perform and what role the Ministry for Niger Delta should perform. So what comes to our mind is that in other times institutions are strengthened. Strengthen an institution and ensure that that institution has capacity over the years. Whatever you are doing, you let the institution handle it. That way, people are able to learn, and you have strong institutions at the end of the day. But here in Nigeria, what we do is we come, we create a small institution out of a major one. We empower that small institution, and it does well. And then the bigger body begins to die at once. That's not what we want to encourage. So we're going to look at the bigger picture and see how we can try to build strong institutions. Every sector has its peculiarity. So we're going to be looking at the peculiarities of all the sectors in this new law that we're coming up. We'll have engagement with Nigerians, we'll have cause to harmonize positions with the Senate, and hopefully we're going to come up with a law that is working. But kudos to what has been achieved in the oil and gas sector. I was privileged to be in Lagos for Peter Tina, and I was marveled by what I saw. I saw that 
sector has grown capacity, tremendous capacity of Nigerians. Recently, the president talked about the AKK uh, yes. yes. pipeline. He talked about that in Malabo, and I was very pleased to note that most of the jobs were going to be handled company oil said that had built capacity matter of fact from the funds that were given to them by the board bank of industry fund i watched the documentary on how the bank of industry said that was one of the companies they encouraged from 200 million dollar fund that was available to them and today they are winning big contracts like this you know i visited uh a friend who owns a company in Lagos, Avin Energy, and they just won the big rounds for three or so oil blocks in the Kuchiraki. I was quite impressed. These are capacities that have been built as a result of this budget act. So it's not going to be easy to do. Yeah, it's not a one shoe fits all when it comes to every other sector, it's dynamic. All the sectors are, dyna are dynamic. I had cause to engage with ICT NIDA in my office, and they told me that if you lift what the provisions of the Nudging Act are and put it in ICT, it will collapse. You know, because they have their peculiarities. We even talked of the issue of can, how can we get that 1% funding? Do we transfer it in ICT to the final consumer? or do we limit it to contractors in the sector? You know, so we need thorough engagement with every sector so we can come up with what works. What we don't want to do is to have people subconsciously, I will use the word subconsciously in quote, fighting the passage of this law, of this act into law. And it can so easily happen because when people begin to feel threatened, uh, that uh, their area of influence is challenged, there will be that resistance subconsciously. So we want thorough, comprehensive engagement with Nigerians in every sector we want to come up with a legislation works. But importantly, the gains that have been recorded in the oil and gas sector should be replicated in every sector of the economy. Oil and gas will not last forever. I know this for a fact, and I keep saying this, with the development of new technologies, hybrid and the rest, oil and gas will thrive for a time. So whatever we're gaining from this sector, from the proceeds, we should deliberately commit it to developing other sectors. That is the only way we can grow as a country. We must be futuristic in our thinking and in our reasoning. ICT is taking over. There's even more money in ICT than in oil and gas in other climates. You know, the big players, the Bill Gates, the Facebook uh, chat and the rest, didn't come from oil and gas, and they are the richest men in the world today. They came from technology, you know, so we must begin to focus on other sectors and see how we can build them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.